Hello, y'all. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 7. Y'all, I'm throwing it back. Okay, I'm doing a mukbang. Can you believe it? So today's mukbang is Wingstop. I got my fries already here. I just heated up the chicken, so let's get it out. I got four different kinds of chicken. Let me tell y'all what I got. Where's my phone? I don't think I've ever done a Wingstop mukbang on my channel. I haven't done a mukbang in over a year. So I got a boneless meal deal. I got 20 boneless wings, five Cajun, five original hot, five lemon pepper, five garlic Parmesan. And I got fries that are lemon pepper and Cajun season. Lemon pepper and garlic Parmesan. I'm just gonna put everything on the plate. It doesn't matter. I'm eating it all. You see the sauce? Yeah. To drink, we have a lemon spindrift. Set it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course we have the ranch, okay? Let me take a bite of everything first. couple of fries. Mm. I am so happy to be eating. All right, what is this one? Mm. That's lemon pepper. It's <clears throat> piping hot. So although I haven't done a mukbang in my channel in like over a year, if you're new here, I usually do mukbangs all the time. Love a mukbang. I still very much watch mukbangs. As a matter of fact, that is what inspired today's vlogmas video. I have been watching Wingstop mukbangs for like two weeks. Something about the Wingstop, the chicken, the crunch, I've been addicted to and I had to do it. I had to, I'm sorry. I had to throw it back to my old school channel, to my old school ways, you know? I'm so happy right now. These fries could be a little bit hotter, but I even put them in the air fryer when I got back home. Between setting up and getting everything, child, you know. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. All right. Mmm. Let me get a garlic parmesan. Ooh. It's so good. This is everything. It's 
So I don't eat Wingstop a lot. I think I maybe had Wingstop three times in my life. This might be the fourth. And this is my first time getting the boneless wings. I got them because they were on sale. Well, they had like a deal, not on sale, but they had a deal. All this was $18. I guess that's a good deal. I don't know. I don't eat there a lot to like really know. Oh, let me get one of these Cajun ones. Oh, look at this, y'all. Oh, look at the seasoning on this. They do have the best ranch. The ranch is everything. Mm. You know when you're craving something? This is a little salty, I ain't gonna lie. You know when you're craving something and you finally get it and it hits the spot? Is this perfect? No, but is this very good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So today I thought I'd talk about Housewives. Bravo Housewives. Since I don't have my podcast anymore. Let me play the intro music. It's silent in here right now, but I'm imagining the music playing like right here. But now we said it. But now we said it. So I wanna talk about Housewives a little bit because it's been on my mind. My girl B Stokes asked me the other day, what are my thoughts on Potomac? And I'm like, I have so much to say, so I should probably just talk about it in a video. Why not? So right now I am watching Housewives of Potomac, Housewives of Beverly Hills, Housewives of Salt Lake City, and Housewives of Miami. That's what, oh y'all, update on the nail. We lost one. The glue ain't it. Check yesterday's Vlogmas. The glue ain't it. Not even 24 hours. I'm going to start off with Miami because I'm not fully caught up. I'm going to talk to the point to where I'm caught up. And that's the basketball game. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I think I like the Parmesan. I don't really like the Cajun too much. It's okay. I don't know. The chicken salad. Larsa is so annoying. She doesn't let anybody talk. And the things that she's saying to cut people off are nothing of substance. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, shut up so that, so Gertie can say it. Gertie has been trying to tell Larsa that she has breast cancer. And Larsa is like making it all about her. And just the, the lack of awareness and the lack of like consideration for Gertie. And even just, we'll put the breast cancer aside. Trying to have a conversation with Larsa seems absolutely impossible. I don't like people that argue when they just keep repeating the same thing over and over so you can't get a word. And it's like, shut up so I can actually like say what I have to say. And that's how I feel about Larsa. And Gertie is so emotional. She's trying so hard to just say, hey, I have cancer. It's what I'm trying to tell you. So like all this other stuff we're going through is so petty, but Larsa can't even let her say it. And then Gertie starts crying. Larsa's like, we're not going to cry today, are we? Girl, I'm trying to tell you I have cancer. And you talking about crying? Let me cry. I just want to know, is there any fan of Larsa? I just want to know who you are and why. Just speak on it. Because I would love to know why you support this woman. Because she is unbearable. I don't think they need her, honestly. I guess they're keeping her around for her relationship with Marcus Jordan. But who cares, honestly? I don't. She's on a train? Their whole relationship is giving publicity. Like, it's giving stunt. Fake. Attention. Clout. 
I'm not here for it. <clears throat> Lisa is going to lose her man. She keeps talking about Lenny, and it's nonstop. I can understand, yes, you're venting, you're going through a 15-year, a divorce of a 15-year marriage. It's traumatic, of course. But for her to keep, like, she calling the new man while she's at home just to vent. She's like, I should probably get a therapist, but i just like to talk to you. I would feel as her partner, like, this is enough. Like, you are talking about him constantly. I understand you're going through a divorce, but you have to... Put yourself first. Stop talking about, because nothing's going to happen from you talking. You're just talking just to vent and talk. So you do need to talk about this with a therapist because he can't help you. I understand venting, but at a certain point, it's like, when are we going to focus on our relationship? Mm-mm, that ain't going to work. Mm-mm. The whole drama with Alexia, Adriana, and Marisol. I don't even know what they're fighting about. What's going on? What's tea? All right, that's them. Miami so far is cute. Last season was everything. So, you know, <clears throat> they have a lot to live up to. Alexia is becoming more and more unbearable to me. I love Alexia. I don't think they should ever lose. I think the cast is great. I think the current cast, of, well, they can lose Larsa, like for real. They can lose Larsa. Make Kiki full time and drop Larsa. His child, please. The drama with Alexia, Adriana, and Marisol, just wrap it up. I know y'all have way more stuff to talk about. I know y'all do. Oh, I like Dr. Nicole. I like her, period. Let's talk about Beverly Hills because... Yeah, I feel like Garcelle's son is making her feel bad on purpose. Oh, I didn't, y'all can't even see my shirt. It's Christmassy. It's just too large. Anyway, I feel like Garcelle's son is intentionally trying to make her feel bad, like guilt trip, right? Not gaslighting per se, but in a way, low key. Loving Erica this season. I know they all on those zip it. They all skinny as hell. But I love Erica's attitude this season. I love when Erica and Garcelle get along. That is my favorite duo. I love Garcelle and Erica together. So I hope they keep it up. I haven't seen the episode with Denise yet. So I'll watch that probably tonight. Mmm. And that garlic parmesan gonna always hit. Mm-hmm. Sutton is doing the most this season. Okay, I have a question for y'all. Do y'all think Kyle is dating that lady, Morgan? I don't know. It's giving attention grab to me. It's giving Chriselle and G Flip. But I think Chriselle and G Flip are authentic. Hmm, tell me about it. Hmm. I am really sad to see what's going on between Kyle and Mauricio. They've been married for 27 years. It's really sad, but, you know, eventually, Kyle's, her life is changing. She is appearing to want more for herself. And it's giving that Mauricio is, like, lazy, in a sense. I know he has his business, the agency and everything, but I think when it comes to like the rest of their life, I don't think he's showing up for Kyle like he should be. And I just think she's tired of it. Garcelle, I would love to see Garcelle date a new man. I wanna see her in love. I don't know if she's in love or not, but I would love to see her date. I'm liking Erica. Sutton is doing the most. They can get rid of Crystal. She's not giving me anything. I liked Crystal before, but now I'm like, what are you contributing to the show? You're not really like giving us anything. Same thing with Dorit. Y'all, they say and Dorit and PK are headed for a divorce. They saying she's not getting her hair done. She's not taking glam. Her hair is brown and not blonde anymore, which apparently is more affordable. What do y'all think about the Dorit and PK situation? I could see them heading for divorce soon and I feel like their divorce would be financially driven. Period, point blank. I want all the garlic parmesans. Y'all know Mike's gonna eat all the rest of this. What are we talking about? Miami, Beverly Hills? I said I had four to talk about. Salt Lake. Oh, Potomac. 
Oh, do I want to talk about Salt Lake or Potomac? Ooh, they're both. Okay, let's do Potomac because honestly, I feel like Salt Lake is giving it to me a little bit more than Potomac. All right. Let me do a little dip first. Garlic Parmesan is showing out today. Period. I'm still waiting for Robin to be fired. I know they kept her on this season so we could see the fallout from the Juan cheating drama, but her attitude is like, when you have a friend and you're trying to explain to them, you're trying to help them open their eyes to a toxic relationship and their response is, so what do you want me to do? What do I want you to do? Bitch, what do you want to do? Like. When Giselle, Ashley, and Sharice did their little intervention with Robin, first of all, y'all will never hear me saying this often. I'm proud of Giselle this season. Giselle is sick of watching Robin look like a fool. Giselle was like, this is enough. Giselle was like, I can excuse cheating like once or twice, but baby, you are looking hella dumb. And her response is just like, so what do y'all want me to do? Y'all want me to leave him? Do you want me to like be mad at him? I want you to feel what, or feel and do what is true to you. How do you really feel? I just feel like Robin is like, I don't know that there's, is this okay to you? You think this is okay for your man to like disrespect you like this? They want me to be mad and angry. They don't want you to be anything. They want you to be aware. They want you to open your eyes. They want you to not look stupid. And you're just like perfectly okay with looking stupid. You're just like, I don't care what people think about us. It's not what, what people think about you. It's what do you think about yourself? Like, how do you feel inside? Do you feel respected? Do you feel valued? Do you feel like this man treats you with, do you feel like this man treats you with respect and love and thinks about you when he's out here buying hotel rooms for a friend, going to the laundromat with a friend and whatever the other thing was. Listen, if you're okay with it, fine. They just want you to be, are you sure you're okay with all of this? They're not trying to tell you to be mad at Juan. They're telling you to stand up for yourself and have respect for yourself. And the fact that she's turning it on them and being like, what do y'all want me to do? No, what do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? Uh, y'all, I'm so sick of Robin. It's been so many years now and there's no getting through to her. She is an absolute brick wall. And I don't know unless we see Juan on the street on video and broad daylight making out with someone or having sex with someone on the ground in public, she's not gonna, she's not gonna say anything. She's gonna be like, well, he told me this. He told you this, that, and the third. I saw a TikTok where the girl was like, Robin is trying to make up for losing all of Juan's money. She's being, what did she say? She's paying the guilt tax. This is enough. You paid enough. First of all, you've gotten the money back tenfold. Y'all are doing okay. That doesn't mean you, just because you lost money doesn't mean you can be cheated on. Doesn't mean you can allow somebody, it's okay to allow somebody to cheat on you. That Those two are completely unrelated situations. So for you to sit here and let this man disrespect you and you think it's okay because you lost money, Girl, let it go. I don't think Juan wants to be with Robin and I think he's just with her because she ain't going nowhere. He got a place to stay. He got somebody taking care of his kids. He can do whatever he wants. He can, he's having his cake and he's eating it too. So why would he leave? Juan is living the life. And as far as things go with Giselle, I'm fine with Giselle. <laughs> I know she don't ever have no storyline. I'm okay with it this season only because she is getting sick of Robin stuff. I like that she's not completely backing Robin. Like, I really like that. As far as her dating Jason from Summer House, 
Jason run. Jason is a good man, Savannah. Yeah, he a little corny, but I... Oh, it, it ain't gonna work out. I, I already know it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Karen, love me some Karen. We'll always love Karen. Queen Karen, okay? Ashley, oh, I am so torn on Ashley. Honestly, Ashley doesn't have a storyline outside of what's going on with her and Michael. And because things seem to be going well and okay with them, like what else is she giving us besides starting unnecessary drama between Wendy and NECA? Whew. Let me talk about Wendy and NECA. When I first saw NECA, I really liked her. I was like, oh my gosh, she drinks champagne when she first wakes up. She's giving luxury, she's beautiful, she has a beautiful husband. Like they look very happy together. They have all these properties. Yes, honey, black girl magic, she's doing it. Love NECA. Then she meets with Ashley, they have this conversation that Ashley completely misinterprets and she does relay it to Wendy. And then when she realizes that she didn't understand what, what was said and that she misinterpreted the conversation, she does go back and try to correct things between Wendy and NECA, but that actually has nothing to do with the actual drama between the two of them. NECA has made it her point to make unnecessary drama between the two of them. I know like everybody else is saying the two Nigerians should get along. I do agree with that. It's just two black women in general and y'all have similar backgrounds. Why not join together and team up against the green eyed bandits? But no, NECA is very much giving, I have studied housewives. I've watched every episode and I know what to do coming in my first season to make a bang. And I'm gonna go after a well-established housewife wife in order to do that it's not a good look honey everybody can see right through you especially like true bravo fans we see exactly what you're doing and it's not cute do i think wendy knows her i think wendy knows of her but i don't think wendy really knows her do i think eddie unfollowed her husband absolutely <laughs> yeah they're definitely lying about that but everything else neca needs to be mad at wendy's sister and mom why are you mad at wendy wendy didn't do nothing to you they did and people are like, oh, don't act like you don't know what your mom is doing. I don't, I don't know what my mom is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. She's out there living her life. We are two different people. Why are you mad at me for something my mom did? I'm not my mom. So in her calling Wendy a bitch and all this, it's just like, ew, you're coming in way too hot. You would have made a great housewife without the Wendy drama, unless you don't have anything else going on for you. And that's what it's giving me. Candace, I love Candace. I love Candace, okay? Yes, me, I'm the Candace fan, I'm the one. All right, moving on to Salt Lake City cause I'm full y'all, I'm very full. I might eat one more though. Salt Lake City, this might be the best season since season one in my opinion. Salt Lake City is bringing it. Monica, ooh, ooh, crazy, Delulu, ooh. Yes, her mom. First of all, they brought back Mary. Thank you. Thank you for realizing y'all need Sister Mary. Y'all need Mary, Mother God. <laughs> Mary is Mother God, okay? <laughs> they realized they needed Mary. I wonder how much they paid her because she is choosing where and when she wants to show up. They are, most of the housewives are contractually obligated to show up to events and stuff. That's why people are like, why did you invite her to your party? Because she signed a contract and she has to show up. A lot of people, I'm sure people, y'all know, if you're a housewives fan, you know. When they're always like, this is my trip. No, it's not. The show planned it and they assigned you as the person on top of everything. It's not your trip. You didn't pay for anything. This show paid for stuff. So like that whole like little behind the scenes, like when they're like, why would you invite this person you clearly hate on your trip? because they signed the contract and they have to go for the show. Mary is like, I'm not going. I'm gonna sit in the Sprinter van. Y'all go out here and act like fools and I'm gonna show up when and where I want to. They are taking whatever they can get of Mary and whatever Mary did, I'm glad she's back. Whitney, I'm starting to like Whitney more and more. I feel like she's becoming her own woman. Um, her and Justin are definitely getting divorced. I give them one more season. They might even announce it at the end of this season. They're getting a divorce. 
it ain't, it ain't gonna last honey I really don't like saying this but I'm excited to watch like the divorce I'm excited to watch Whitney be single I love that Lisa queen y'all I love Lisa she can do no wrong in my eyes yes what do you mean okay awesome I'm Lisa I love Lisa oh my god that's gorgeous I want to study her Lisa can have her own show and I will watch whatever Lisa does do you have Vita tequila I love a Diet Coke. <laughs> I can't help it. Heather, she is tolerable this season. Meredith is on drugs. <laughs> okay. Meredith switches accents from scene to scene. The husband, the rumors, the nastiness. Girl, where are you from? But I love Meredith. We're going to talk about Miss Monica. Oh, Angie. Okay, do y'all think Angie's husband is gay? I don't know. I'm not here to judge. I mean, I kind of am though. That's the point of the show. Do I think he's gay? Probably. Probably. If she's okay with whatever her husband's doing, let him, let him do it. I don't think they're going to make it. She's giving me lily pad. Um, so what the lily pad theory is, and it is very popular amongst housewives, is a housewife will come onto a show her first or second season, and by her second or third season, she's divorced. What that means is they get on the show to establish themselves, to get money, to get attention, to get themselves set up, and then they get a divorce. They leave the band. That's kind of what Angie is giving me. We have tons of lily pad examples. Y'all, I don't even wanna go through how many lily pads there have been on Housewives. I can go on forever. Angie is giving me lily pad. I don't think they're gonna make it. And I think she's just setting herself up so she can be an independent woman and leave that man who's probably gay. And I'm not saying he's gay because he's a hairdresser. I'm saying he's gay because he seems gay to me. Nothing to do with hair. You can be straight hairdresser. That has not determined your sexuality. Like that doesn't determine. He just seems like a gay man. Profession aside. And that's cool. Be gay and be happy. But I feel like because of their religion, I think it might be a problem. So that might be what's holding him back from being his true self. I think they have an agreement. And I feel like because of the show, his secret is getting out and she's starting to feel embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, y'all. If you've been okay with it, be okay with it. It's cool. For you all right let's go on to the star of the show stars monica and her mom monica came on the show and she knocking shit down okay she is a former assistant of jen shaw who is now in jail <laughs> for fraud first of all the first episode she said well i was excommunicated from the mormon church because i had an 18 month affair with my brother-in-law that should have been the first red flag. But if I was like, oh, look at her. You go queen, you're being honest. That should have been the first red flag that I was like, she's no good. But I was like, oh, I applaud her for being honest. Good for her. No, because she just gets worse every episode. And I love, don't ever fire her. Don't ever make her mom a housewife too. Monica then goes on to talk about her childhood and how her mom like pretty much abandoned her, moved to New York and left her with neighbors. And then we see her mom who is very much giving, I'm no therapist or, you know, psychiatrist, but it's very much giving multiple personality disorder. She's up, she's down, she's laughing. She doesn't see where she's wrong. She called guacamole a dessert. She talks to plants. Um, yeah, I can see why Monica is the way she is. Y'all, I can't even explain. Like, I can't even get into You just have to watch it. If you're going to watch any of these shows, watch Salt Lake City. Don't even go back. Just start with this season. Go right on in. Get on in there and be amazed. Because Monica keeps saying she doesn't want to repeat the patterns that her mom has done. But she's doing it. For example, Angie threw like an Easter party, some sort of party for all the kids and Monica brought her kids and her mom. Then Monica proceeded to get in an argument with Angie and her mom kind of took Angie's side and was like, you're being loud. Don't yell in these people's home. And Monica is a terrible arguer. She's one of those people, like I said, she likes to talk over you and she likes to repeat the same thing over and over. And also she likes to insult you, your physical appearance and not talk about what the actual um, issue is, what the argument's about. She, you're ugly, you need Botox. Like girl, that's not even what we're talking about, but okay. And then, so in this argument, she pulls her kids out of the party. We gotta go. And then she meets with Angie later. She's like, that's the first time my kids have felt a sense of family 
but yet you took them out of that environment because of your mom. Do you see that you're doing the same thing that your mom did to you? No, because your your mind is messed up too. And I don't think Monica sees that she is a lot like her mom, a lot. Another scene, they had like some sort of pioneer woman's luncheon. Monica got into it with Lisa, started attacking Lisa's appearance. And then two seconds later, she's crying, being like, I can't believe they're all attacking me. Hello, did you just, and she said the most vile things to Lisa and then gonna turn around and cry and then just go back to the meeting or the lunch and just completely shut down. She's not talking, she's not engaging. I'm just being quiet, like, but you started it. You started it. It's you. So like Heather said, Heather is realizing like, oh my gosh, Monica is a lot like Jen Shaw. She's up, she's down. I don't know like who I'm gonna get the next time I meet. I hope Monica watches this. I, I can't wait for the reunion. Like girl, do you know that you are your mom? I am so pleased with this round of Housewives that's going on right now. Beverly Hills can bring a little bit more. They are slipping. I heard the Denise Richards episodes are really good or episode, whatever. So I'm behind on that one, but I love Denise Richards. I hope they bring her back now that Lisa renna has gone. I was so, I was such a huge Denise Richards fan growing up. I know that sounds like a little bit odd, but I was obsessed with her. She was like one of the most beautiful people like I've ever seen. Her and Garcelle, like if y'all watch the Jamie Foxx show, like y'all fancy, come on. Like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Her and Denise Richards, like, I wanted to be them. So for Denise to only be on one season because of Lisa Renna, they need to bring her drunk ass back. Denise, I miss her and we need her. We need her this season, we do. This felt really good to talk about. I could go on forever, but this food is getting cold and I need to give this to my husband and I'm very full. I could talk about Housewives forever. I really do miss my podcast, but I just really don't have the time to commit to it anymore. But let me know if y'all are interested in more like mukbangs like this where I talk about the latest episodes. I'm really down to do it in a mukbang form. I like this, it was cool. With all that being said, y'all happy Vlogmas and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.